meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. This is the uh, Board of Commissioners meeting Tuesday, October 30th, 2018. Move right to the consent agenda. We have approval of minutes for September 18th, 2018. Approval of payroll, October 19th, 2018. Approval of claims, October 11th, October 18th, and then October 25th, 2018. Weights and measures monthly report is on file for September 16th to October 15th, 2018. Uh, and then we'll go through the Memorial Opera House. Uh, Laura, I'll give you the sure. honor. Uh, Nathan Miller, Artistic Services Agreement. Don Parker, Artistic Services Agreement, September. Kyle Lidke, Andrew Flash, uh, both Artistic Services Agreements. Don Parker, <laughs> Artistic Services Agreement, October. Bobby Sue Kavachkov, Deb Haddad, Chris Haddad, Jennifer London, Angela Hyde, Chris Staubaum, Chris Lindstrat. And Allison Lowe, all artistic services agreements. Rob Harkel, doing business as Brightside Music, LLC, venue rental agreement, and Tom Lounge's venue rental agreement. Okay, so that is the uh, breakdown for the consent agenda. Open up to the floor. Any questions or comments or motions? Motion to approve consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second for consent agenda. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Move right into commissioner's business. Uh, we have uh, first, number one, we have an agreement uh, for professional services between Porter County, Cohen, Cohen and Malad, LLP, and Friedman and Associates PC regarding substantial damages which have incurred as a result of deceptive and unfair marketing of the, and distribution of opioids. Uh, Attorney McClure, you want to sort of give us a, an update on that? This is a proposed contract that we would enter into with uh, Cohen and, and Malad uh, LLP. There's, this is the uh, opioid lawsuit uh, class action that, that has been uh, moving through Indiana. There are several counties. Commissioner Biggs and I did meet with them, uh, with, with the representatives of the law firm. Um, a couple weeks ago uh, to go over it, um, but basically this would be having Porter County enter into that opioid litigation. Any comments or questions from the board? Would it be possible for them to come up and uh, give us a presentation? It is. To the public? I think they would be. Uh, from the meeting that uh, Commissioner Biggs and I had with them, I think they'd be more than willing to do that to give us an idea. I know there are some substantial questions the commissioners had concerning, uh, you know, the workload. There would be a substantial amount of uh, discovery and paperwork to be done. I'm not saying that's insurmountable or a reason not to do it, but there was the questions of the manpower issues. Obviously, the question of how uh, the law firms would be paid, where it's pending, what kind of process we would go through. Um, so. I do think it's very uh, possible to have them come up at the uh, our next meeting to review that and, and then hopefully have all the questions answered. Okay. So do we need to... We don't need to vote on that, yeah. do we? I think that's a good idea. Um, I think you could just uh, yeah, do a motion for me to contact them and have them up here for the next meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Uh, for Attorney McClure to uh, reach out and uh, uh, get the Porter County, uh, Cohen and Malad to come up in front of us and give us a presentation on the opioid uh, uh, deceptive and unfair marketing and distribution of opioids. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, number two, Pangier Corp. This is payment application number two for the Porter County Expo Center renovations. In the amount of $69,053.60, bid package one, general trades. With a balance to finish of $657,865.70, I'll open it to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second for Pangier Corp. Payment application number two. 
for the Porter County Expo Center. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries. Tangier Court, payment application number two for Porter County Expo Center renovation in the amount of $33,740.20. This is bid package three, metal studs, drywall, with a balance to finish of $341,702.65. I'll open it up to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second for Pangier Corp. Pay payment application number two for the expo. Uh, bid package number three, metal studs drywall. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, number four, Keo Mechanical. Uh, this again is for the Porter County Expo Center. This is pay payment application number one. Uh, and that's the renovation in the amount of $31,514.11 with a balance to finish of $42,374.89. I'll open it up to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second for Keo Mechanical, payment application number one for the Porter County Expo Center. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Number five, DA Dodd, LLC, payment application number two for the Porter County Expo Center renovation. In the amount of $31,773.32, uh, with a balance to finish of $657,947.19. Open it up to the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second for DA Dot LLC, payment app number two, Expo Center. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. I believe DA Dot is for mechanical work, so just want to make sure to clarify that. Uh, Continental Electric, number six, payment application number two for the Porter County Expo Center in the amount of $15,502.10 uh, with a balance to finish of $526,555.35. All those, uh, I'll open up the floor. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second for Continental Electric, payment app number two for Expo Center. This is for electrical work. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And you're correct, I'd check that is mechanical. Uh, that, yeah, mechanical, yeah. Uh, seven, Gary of Construction. Uh, this, now we're going to switch over to the uh, courthouse. P Gary of Construction, payment application number three for renovations to the Porter County Courthouse in the amount of $36,641.50 with a balance to finish of $79,530. I'll open up the floor. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion second for Gary of Construction, payment app three for renovation of the courthouse in the amount of thirty six six forty one fifty. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Both same sign. Motion carries. MCOR Higher Electric, payment application number one for the renovation at the Porter County Courthouse in the amount of six thousand thirteen dollars fifty cents with a balance to finish of one hundred sixty six thousand four hundred twenty one dollars and fifty cents. Uh, I'll open it up to the floor for any commission. Uh, motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second for MCOR Higher Electric. Uh, payment app number one for the courthouse, downtown Valpo Courthouse, in the amount of $6,013.50. All those in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. So we're done with the construction stuff. Now we're going to move to uh, animal control contracts. We've received uh, three animal control uh, service agreements. Do we have to do these separately? Nate, you can do them together if you choose. Okay, so we're going to lump uh, number 9, 10, and 11 together. Uh, these are animal control uh, shelter agreements uh, between the town of Pines in Porter County, uh, the town of Burns Harbor in Porter County, and the town of Beverly Shores in Porter County. Um, and these are these another two-year agreement, Scott, or the Three-year contract. Three-year contract, and uh, we uh, we are also today publish or are, are going to make public uh, the uh, Porter County uh, animal intake and animal control uh, control services cost allocation method. Uh, this is basically when we uh, uh, built the new animal shelter. We uh, went out and did two-year service agreements with all of the municipalities, uh, so we could garner. Uh, animal intake numbers over a two-year period in the new shelter. That two years, it's sort of come and gone. And so now what we're doing is we're taking all that data, we're looking it over. This report is the, is the result of all that data, and it breaks it down into cost. Basically, in a nutshell, what it'll tell you, 
is unincorporated Porter County is paying 75% of the cost of the animal shelter and we're only taking in 50% of the animals. So Porter County is supplementing this animal shelter uh, more than half to the municipality. So um, it's all in there. It's in uh, 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 pie charts. It's in numbers. It's any way you want to look at it, but that document is public now and uh, uh, feel free to uh, use it. Uh, so we can put these three contracts together and I'll open it up to the floor. Uh, motion to approve. Uh, Do I need to identify each one? Or? Yes. The uh, contract for animal control and animal shelter services between Porter County Government, the Town of Pines, Burns Harbor, and the Town of Beverly Shores. Second with discussion. Okay. Has, has the price changed on these on these contracts from the first two years? It's been adjusted slightly. Some have gone up a little. Some have gone down. Okay. Can you tell uh, which which have gone up? Do you remember which ones went up? And again, it was based on numbers of animals. Beverly Shores went up $400. Burns Harbor went up $400. Chesterton went from $31,120 down to $27,347. Hebron went from $5,600 to $6,393. Counts went from $1,600 to $2,400. Ogden Dunes went from $1,600 to $2,000. Pines went from $2,400 to $2,000. Portage went from $36,000 to $38,090. Porter went from $11,520 to $10,158. Valparaiso went from $63,200 to $66,154. The total, uh, the original contracts as allocated produced $156,240. Under the new contracts proposed, of which three we are approving today, the, two, the total new um, potential revenue for the animal shelter would be 158,540. Okay. The ones the ones we have on the agenda today, the municipalities we have on the agenda, have they been notified of the changes? They oh, all yes. have contracts. They, they all have for them to come back. Yeah, they all have this. It was all mailed to them and these are now the individual communities are taking action uh, to up for the remainder of the next three years. So they're just trickling in evidently. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. yep. And we offered to meet with anyone who wanted more detail. Call question. Um, yeah, I think we have a, we had a motion and a second. Yeah, we had it. Yeah. Well, we didn't vote yet. No, we did not. Um, again, the, the takeaway is unincorporated Porter County is paying, um, um, come on, 75%. 75%. And we're only taking 50% of the animals in. Um, I'd like to call a vote. Uh, all those in favor of the animal control contract between Porter County, Town of Pines, Town of Burns Harbor, Town of Beverly Shores. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, next up, Health Department, Letty Zephada. Come on up, Letty. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Good morning, everyone. Huh? Good morning. Rhonda Young, could you come up as well? <clears throat> All right, take it away. Okay, uh, pretty much what I'm uh, proposing is that we, I have a list that I submitted to everyone in reference to the employees that I believe should be exempt based on um, how they were listed before. I believe there was a, an error in the transition, and uh, pretty much I'm just a, uh, requesting that it be go back to being exempt employees. Okay. And you're okay to all this? Yeah, we've been working together, and I told her um, we've been going over the exempt status, and they all are RNs, 
and that was one of the rules according to the Fair Labor Standards, the WRNs, and all the environmental and the investigator and the food inspectors, those fit also. Okay. Has a change in, in, in status affected your uh, budget? No, no. no. It's improved it's time. Yeah, it's, it's the same, but as far as the budget, but in reference to now they're not entitled to compensatory time, mm -hmm. which is going to be saving a lot of money. Um, okay. When we did the timekeeping policy, when you did it back in February, we pretty much 95% left off the health department. We only put the field officers. We didn't even put the director or, or any of them. So we just need to amend it and miss those. Okay. So this is a continuation of the cleanup of comp time and, yes. and other things. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks for addressing it. Oh, and thank you. Motion yes. to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to request and amend uh, the exempt and time policy for the health department. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, ladies. Thank, thank you. you. Next up is the assessor. Come on up. Uh, this is to receive an open bid for annual adjustment contract. We've received three, oops, three bids. Now pass them down. First one's uh, Appraisal Research Corp. First one open is from Appraisal Research Corp Corporation, and they're out of Ocean, Ocean, Indiana, and their price is $41,500. Nexus Group Property Tax Consultants out of Zionsville. It looks like their the annual adjustment ratio study is seventy four thousand five hundred dollars, and then they also have an additional amount here for appeals and Peterborough services for three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars, for a total of seventy eight thousand two hundred fifty dollars. This is from uh, Leaner Group. And they're out of Indianapolis. And their amount uh, is $52,632. $52,632. And those are the three quotes. Okay. Any comments or questions from the board? Your office will go back and make sure that we're comparing apples with apples. Yes. And come back with a recommendation. Yes. We'll do yeah. that. We may want to. Uh, we we may want to interview uh, the three. Uh, uh, once you come up with the thing, uh, once you come up with the recommendation, I think we're interested in. Uh, uh, also creating another layer here because of what's been going on over the last month in your office. Um, I think we wanted, would like to meet with those and find out uh, how this whole process is going to go forward, and we want to have a better understanding of that. Sure. So please send that back to the uh, assessor. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Mike Brickner, 911.
Hi, Mike. Morning. What do you got here? Another Tiburon deal, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Um, this is a good one, though. This is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Far and few between. <laughs> We'd like to share with the uh, with the group, if I could, just kind of explain this um, this contract. One of the questions as we're continuing to move forward with our uh, our one county philosophy on 911 and the uh, moving forward with our primary channel uh, discussion we've had um, in methodically doing that. One of the questions was uh, for law enforcement officers uh, to have GPS on their uh, uh, police cars. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, something that uh, we're able to do is provide that GPS with this contract. You know, our goal is to have every law enforcement uh, officer uh, equipped with a GPS system, uh, a tracking so we know where they are uh, in case they were to ever need help, uh, and that would go through our 911 center. And with this uh, uh, contract that I'm asking for today would uh, let us go ahead and proceed to be able to do that. Uh, this is at no cost. Um, if I could, I'd also like to share with the group some good news. Uh, for the calendar year of 2018, we have been able to save close to $103,000 from our foundation budget uh, by going through and looking at uh, contracts that were no longer in service, uh, different uh, phone lines that we uh, were not needed, um, and uh, part of that savings is a credit that we were able to establish with uh, uh, Tiburon which is our CAD vendor uh, currently. So uh, that's just a little bit of what we're I'm approaching the board with today. I would just like to follow up with that too. I know that venture started quite some time ago looking at all the lines and that was, that was quite a monumental task. It took us over six months to sort of complete that. And I know I was talking with the NITCO guys and a lot of the stuff that they were chasing down for us too, actually going to the physical locations making sure that everything was in there. So um, probably something that had not been done for a long time and it's, it's just part of the uh, redirection and the new direction for the 911 call center. So we're uh, uh, digging up everything, looking at it and uh, reapplying it. So thank you, Mike. Uh, any comments or questions from the board? Motion to approve. <laughs> Second. We have a motion to second for a software license in the agreement of $12,175. Due to a credit, uh, we have in the amount of $24,011.50. There will be no cost to us regarding this contract. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Thanks, Michael. Thank you. Yep. Don, uh, Don Wells and Adams Renko. Morning, Don. Hi. What do you got? Well, we had a three-year agreement with Adams Renko that expired, and I asked them to extend it for one more year. Uh, it'll be fixed pricing on the copies of, for all the copy machines. So you kept us fixed for another year. For another year. Okay. Some of the, some of the uh, costs per copies did go up because of the age of the copy machine. So. What's the price of the extension, Don? Doesn't cost us anything. Nothing. It's just a, okay. Uh, motion to approve the one-year extension for Adams Remco. Second. We have a motion and a second for an extension to Adams Remco for one year. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Highway Department, Rich Sexton. We're going to receive and open truck bids. Morning, guys. Good morning. How's it going? Guys, use the zipper anymore? Not yet. We're <laughs> Trying to find some more places to do it. We'll, it's we'll get some. Right yeah. 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 So are these these are the three new dump trucks, or which trucks are these? Yeah, we've been dump trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dump trucks. Okay, we have one for the bituminous distributor. Yeah. Oh. Distri yeah. One for the distributor. Yeah. Right. Sorry. One for the distributor. Yes. Yeah. One at a time. One at a time. This one is for the distributor. This is the snowplow. Snowplow. No, right? The distributor. Yeah, that's distributor. All right. How many for how many for snowplow do we have? 
Well, we have one, but they're in two different packages, so I don't know if there's two, if there's an alternate. I'm not sure. They're not open. Uh, do we have more than one for the, for no, the distributor? No, one, one per. One for the distributor? Mm -hmm. Send that one down. This is the first. only one mm -hmm. for the distributor. Only one for the distributor. Yeah. $168,000. And this is an extension of the equipment that was approved. Uh, for the uh, chip and sealing equipment. I think this is the last piece, right? Yes, sir. That we need for the chip and seal that was previously approved. Yeah, everything else was sole source, so that's why we, that's this one that wasn't a sole source. And that's cheaper than we figured. Yeah. Yep. That's good price. About, thir about 30000 About <laughs> 30000 Okay. Company that's two different. I'm not sure how you did this. Southeastern equipment. These are for the snow thing. Yeah. Yeah, one is for Volvo. Just two models that carry a brand. Yeah, these are for uh, four uh, dump trucks. For and the <laughs> that's not the snow plow. well, it is a snow plow. It's dump truck, snow plow, salt spreader, and there's also a trade-in dollar amount. So did I get the gross less the trade-in? Yes. Okay. Um, the quote uh, from Volvo. Is uh, eight hundred eighty-four thousand seven hundred fifty-five dollars and seven fifty-four cents, and then we're trading in three vehicles uh, in the amount of one hundred five thousand dollars. So the net effect is seven hundred seventy-nine thousand seven hundred fifty-five dollars and forty cents. And then Pozo Mac. Uh, their quote is uh, the same, uh, four trucks, uh, all the same specifications, um, $868,758.36 with a total trade of 105000 less that for a net amount of $763,758.36. And that is for uh, Pozo Mac. I believe that's our bids for that. So you'll take those under advisement and we'll talk about those at the next meeting. Yes, sir. Okay. Next, we have a request to transfer funds. Um, this is from Fund 1176 from account 1110 salaries in the amount of $3,500 to account 1130 for hourly, and that's just needed to finish the year. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to request to transfer funds. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Post saying sign. Motion carries. Uh, next, we have another transfer, uh, Fund 1176 from account 1110, uh, in the amount of $30,000 for overtime uh, to cover possible snow events. Comments? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to transfer funds in the amount of $30,000 to account 1130 for overtime. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Post same sign. Motion carries. Thanks, guys. Everybody. Oh, there's one quick thing. Everybody got their slip-resistant shoes and boots now, so Excellent. Uh, and their clothing allowance for the year, so everybody should be ready to go with that. Good. Right, Thanks, guys. Good Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Keep plugging away. See you, Jimmy. Next up, we have development stormwater management. Bob Thompson. <laughs> Builder Bob. <laughs> I got Bob the Builder. <laughs> I like your hat. I wore this for a reason. Well, we're going to hear about it, I think. You're not yes. going to tell us some really bad news. Right? We're, yeah, nothing. No, we're having a groundbreaking ceremony on Thursday. 
for the old South Haven. And, this is and the public doing. is invited. Yes. So I just wanted to wear this to kick that off. <laughs> um, first on this on the list, we have United Consulting Bridge Inspection Report. For 2018, we just completed phase one. Our consultant, United Consulting, is here. And I would like to introduce um, Chris Dyer here um, to give you a brief summary of uh, the recent uh, inspection that was completed this year. Give him a microphone. Good morning. Good morning. Like Bob said, my name is Chris Dyer from United Consulting. I'm the project manager overseeing the Porter County Bridge Inventory. Um, in order to remain eligible to receive federal funds, the Federal Highway Administration requires that all county bridges over 20 feet in length are inspected every two years. This inspection contract is administered through NDOT, and all 129 bridges were inspected in May as part of Phase 1. Upon completion of the field work, we submitted a post-inspection letter highlighting various maintenance items that the county could work on while we were finalizing the data and compiling the report. So today I'd like to present you with the final version of the Porter County Phase 1 Bridge Inventory Report for your review. First off, I'd like to draw your attention to the summary sheet on the inside of the front cover. While this binder includes the entirety of our inspection findings, this sheet provides a bullet point list of some of the more noteworthy aspects of the information included within. The bottom portion of the front page highlights the bridges that we have given the highest priority for replacement and rehabilitation. We rank these bridges using a combination of factors, including the condition rating, the load capacity, the safety of the traveling public, the daily traffic volumes, and the estimated remaining life. In addition to our engineering judgment, we discussed this list with Bob Thompson and Mike Novotny to ensure that the county's future planning needs and preferences are reflected in your report. The more inclusive list of the potential replacement structures and those in need of rehabilitation can be found on page nine. The back of this sheet shows a snapshot of how the Porter County Bridge Program compares to the statewide averages in various uh, categories. The normal inspection frequency for county bridges is 24 months. However, bridges with a condition rating of four or less um, for the deck, superstructure, or substructure require more frequent inspections in order to monitor progression of the defects in these uh, that are in poor condition. Currently, Porter County has 16 bridges on this increased frequency list. Um, with our understanding of the current replacement, rehabilitation, and maintenance uh, plan, over the next six years, many of these deficiencies will be addressed. Also included inside the front cover is a flash drive. This flash drive contains um, all the bridge asset data um, for integration into the GIS program, um, all the inspection photos, and a copy of our interactive report. This interactive report allows the users to navigate from the table of contents to any section in the report and back, to go back and forth between the county map and the individual inspection reports, and to access all the additional photos from the bridge with the click of a mouse. If you would like, I'll be more than happy to demonstrate how this works at the conclusion of the meeting. So on behalf of United, I would like to thank Porter County for selecting us to work on this with you. And if you have any questions uh, regarding the information in the report or using the interactive map, uh, my card's located inside the spine there. And just give me a call. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the group? Nice job, guys. Again, just uh, for people in the audience, just to remind, um, the, the GIS component of this is, is going to be very big, not just for the county, but for the, for the taxpayers. Because on our GIS system, uh, you'll be able to, from the luxury of your home, be able to pull up any bridge, and you'll be able to give all kinds of information on what's going on with that bridge when it was last maintained. It's just going to have all kinds of information that you can get just with the click of our GIS. That again is our, 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 our migration and movement towards more information on our GIS system to where the public can access all kinds of different things in a format to where uh, it's very understandable, very readable, but it will give you a lot of information just from your home, uh, just by getting on the website. So uh, uh, this, this is, uh, I know the, the Stormwater and Management Board 
we're very committed uh, to upgrading and enhancing our our GIS, you'll hear us talking about that a lot, and I think we even have a little presentation today on some of the features that you're going to be seeing as we start uh, moving in this direction. This was a big part of that, and I'm glad to see that it's now underway, so thank you. Any other questions from anybody else? Bob, you have something to say? I forgot one other introduction, and that is Jen Graucock here, sitting here, who is also with United. Thank you. Look yeah. forward to the uh, updates. Uh, next up, uh, we have a request for bids for the Bridge 126 project. Uh, this is 700 north over Salt Creek to be accepted at the December meeting. Um, give us a little lowdown on that. Yes, Bridge 126 is 700 north over Salt Creek, as you mentioned. It's one of the three that are part of the capital improvement plan. And we are just about complete with purchasing all the right-of-way necessary with that. We, are, we reviewed internally, I believe, the 90% uh, completion set of plans on that. Uh, USI Consultants is working on that. We're thinking December that we're going to go out and advertise for the sealed bids, if not at the latest January. So we wanted to get out the public announcement that we were going to go forward and look for sealed bids for this project coming up. Okay. Do we have to vote on that to request bids? Yeah. Okay. I'll open it up to the floor. Any questions? Uh, motion to approve request for bids. Second. So we have a motion and a second for request for bids on Bridge 126 project. This is 700 North over Salt Creek. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Post same sign. Motion carries. Uh, next, do you have an introduction? We do. Uh, another piece to our department coming in. Matt, you want to come up and tell us about yourself? Thank you. My name is Matt Gavellic. I'm a professional engineer. I'm from Valparaiso, born and raised. Nice. Uh, so it's great to be back home. I recently came from Louisville, um, so it's great to relocate here. I have 11 years of experience uh, internationally, locally, um, as well as in uh, local government. I work for St. Joe County and as a town engineer um, out in uh, north central Indiana. So. Um, looking forward to uh, leveraging my experience to bring value to the county. And that's for our tra that's for our traffic highway engineer senior position, highway engineer position, which has been open for for um, about a year. Yes, and we've been diligently looking, and we've been uh, very yes. particular on who we bring into the department. And we're just we're pleased to death to have you. Yeah. Thank Welcome you. home. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome Appreciate home. That. Thank so, you. So. Yes. Thank you and good luck. And if there's anything that we can do up here, let us know. Okay. I think the highway department is off and running. They're they're doing a lot of things right now, so yeah. we're looking forward to you to fold on into what we got going on and Thank looking you. for the help. Great. Yeah. Thank you. you. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Next up, we have a GIS update. Uh, Chuck uh, is going to come up here ahead of our GIS. And uh, he's going to show you a few little features that we're working on. Uh, good morning. And uh, give, you an, give you an idea of what he's been spending all his time on. So, Chuck, ha take it away. Uh, yeah, I'm the uh, GIS coordinator for Porter County. My name is Chuck. Uh, Chuck, the microphone there if you could. We, sure. we want to make sure we pick this up. I'm the uh, GIS coordinator for Porter County, Chuck Miller. Um, over the past year, we've been doing a lot of work building a um, online infrastructure for our GIS office. Um, part of what Jeff was talking about, um, we're taking a lot more of our data sets and bringing them out for public access. And in order to do that, um, we had to build the infrastructure for it. We've had a, a fairly robust system internally for a long time. Um, and we have had data available publicly, but this is going to allow us to uh, really put a lot more out there, make more of a data-rich um, GIS system for public consumption. Um, so today, specifically, what I want to show is a uh, GIS web portal um, that has allowed us to put a lot more information, like I mentioned, out um, public-facing, some of which, um, some features have some also some really cool extra, um, extra capabilities um, that we'll show um, real quick. So 
basically, I should also introduce uh, Carrie Lear is our uh, CAD and GIS tech for the stormwater department. She's going to kind of help run the uh, machine here for me so I can talk um, and not have to be staring at a screen. Um, so this is um, the map that we have out available. Um, if you want to zoom out all the way for me real quick. Um, you can get to this map going, <coughs> pardon me, you can get through this map um, going through the Porter County homepage um, and then through departments, um, government departments, and then the GIS. Um, GIS uh, page at the uh, bottom of the short bit of text there, you'll see three links. Um, now, this isn't replacing the web feature we've had available in the past. Um, this is in addition to, so anyone that's comfortable with uh, what we've had, um, it'll still be there, so no concerns there. Um, but this is just allowing us, through what we've done in the past year with uh, creating um, internal web features, publishing them out um, on our own county web servers, and then consuming them in the uh, ArcGIS Online platform, um, we found is a really effective method of getting more data out to the public. Um, so that's what we're looking at here. Um, again, all these web features you'll see are being hosted here in the county, um, which is which is neat because it allows us to update regularly. Um, what we've done is we have a production environment um, where our servers are internal. That's where a lot of our day-to-day -day work is done. Um, and then there's a team set up to replicate that data out to a staging environment nightly. Um, so this data actually will be a lot more up-to-date also than we've had in the past. Um, up to a day, um, up to date. Um, so if you would, um, yeah, go ahead, keep the legend on for now. I just kind of want to show some functionality for this map. Um, as you scroll down into this map, you'll see that this legend is populated. Um, some data features show up at different zoom heights. Um, that's primarily because some stuff like contours, things like that, um, at too far of a, um, too height, too far of a height would, uh, wouldn't be so uh, some things pop in as you zoom in, and those will display in the legend um, as you zoom in and out. If uh, you could actually just go all the way, or actually, you know what, could you click on a parcel for us? Um, much like the map that many are used to, um, this also has parcel data, parcel information. Um, quite a bit in here, again, updated to the day, um, which again will still be available on the other map. Um, this just allows us to update a little more frequently. Um, and throw more layers out there. Um, could you zoom back out to all the way um, home? Yeah. And then instead of the legend, could you bring up the uh, feature sets for us? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this, uh, this is going to allow for the layer list. This is going to show you what's all right out there available now. Um, I'll kind of do a quick rundown of what we uh, what we see here on the screen. Um, if you want to start at the top with environmental, and go ahead and just stay all the way zoomed out for us so we can kind of see how this stuff comes on as we move along. <coughs> um, might take just a minute for it to render. Um, now, could you also um, expand that? What these are is, um, what these are, are layer groupings. So you're going to see a heading, um, and then underneath that heading, you're going to see several different features um, that are appropriate to that heading packed underneath. Um, so, some to point out a couple things we have here. Um, what you're seeing are uh, wetlands, um, soil types. Um, if you want to go on, and also I should mention that um, the layer headings do have to be turned on to see anything that rolls out underneath, um, which allows you to um, set up groups that you want to see um, under a certain heading. You can turn them all off at once instead of having to individually go through all those different sets. Um, so go ahead and look at reference for me, please. Um, reference layer, this has like, uh, for instance, our contours, uh, building footprints, impervious surface data. Um, and you don't actually have to show those. It'll take a while to render um, contours at this point. But uh, could you go ahead and move on to stormwater? Thank you. Um, so stormwater layer, um, could you expand that layer list? Um, so again, some, some features you'll see are redundant, and that's because these, um, what this is is sort of the, the smorgasbord of all of our GIS data in one spot. Um, we also will be developing individual maps um, that are sort of more focused, um, for instance, specifically a zoning map, specifically a hydrology map, things like that, that if, if you don't want everything and you kind of want it simplified, you'll be able to pull up one of those. 
they'll be found at the same spot as this map is found, um, so they're easy to get to. Um, so yeah, we'll see that we have the uh, flood hazard maps in here, um, watershed maps in here, uh, urbanized areas, um, historic wetlands, again, the wetlands. Um, and if you can scroll down to the bottom, this is one of the feature layers I was talking about that has some kind of cool functionality. Um, if you could turn on the stormwater service provider at the very bottom of that. <clears throat> so what this is allowing for us to do, um, if you want to select on one of those uh, stormwater service areas. So what this does is if you're in an area and you have a stormwater, um, any kind of stormwater question or issue and you're looking at who provides your service for your area, um, you can click on the map there, it'll bring up this pop-up that uh, shows who your contact name is, the area you're in, phone number, and then there's a website with a more information um, link there. If you click that link, it'll actually take you to the home website of um, wh whomever your entity is. Um, this just happened to have been an area that is in an unincorporated Porter County, but um, there's other um, other districts or other entities as well, and their information is there also. It just makes it easier to locate and then get in contact with your uh, provider. Um, so if we could move on then to zoning districts. Um, this is another kind of neat um, feature with some, some added functionality. So if you want to go ahead and click on any of those uh, zoning districts, again, you'll see a link there with more information. Um, not only does it tell you what your zoning is for your particular area of your district, but if you hit the more information button, it's going to bring up um, actually the section of the um, UDO that describes that um, particular district um, so that you can um, see what all the uh, regulations, rights, information concerning that type, that district type, you can get right to that um, and get a lot more information than maybe was available before just being able to see what your district is. <coughs> And then if we could uh, go ahead and move on there to residential. Um, so residential, again, a um, uh, good collection of features in here. We've got uh, subdivisions, neighborhoods, uh, unified school districts, um, some of our county parks, um, tax districts, um, and then some uh, 20, uh, 2010 census information on the township and block level that shows population and housing counts. Um, actually, I'm currently working up a more robust uh, uh, demographic data set also um, leading up to the 2020 census, um, so it'll be uh, comparable data, um, which should be rolling out in the next couple weeks. Um, also with residential, if you would really quick for me, um, there's also an added button. If you look over by where you could, in the top left, where you could enter an address or a PIN number to be able to locate your property in the map, um, there's a series of widgets under that. Um, now, one of them is a base map widget, which I should point out to the far left. Um, the reason I have this set to the um, the sort of uh, blank base map, background base map right now is just for the ease of being able to see these features as they come, um, come up in the map as we move through it. But you can choose um, uh, an assortment of different base maps in here. Uh, if you want the aerial imagery, we can throw that in. Um, but for this presentation, we'll keep the gray because it's a lot easier for, I think, everyone to see um, data sets as they come up. Um, so the, the farthest right widget, which is kind of an interesting thing, um, this will show you where your polling location is. Um, so if you click on that, there's two methods. You can put in your address um, or you can alternatively select that um, that arrow and then click on the map and what it'll do um, if you want to go ahead in fact let's do the address first let's just put in the address of this building let's say we lived here um, there we go all right um, so it's going to give a uh, uh, pop-up uh, option so you don't necessarily always have to put in the entire address first off what it's going to do is um, give you your polling location um, the address the city it's in um, and then if you want to just move that um, pop-up box out of the way a little bit, or just move it, don't close it, um, that's all right. Uh, go ahead and hit that uh, arrow for me. We'll do it the easy way, and we'll just go select the map. Um, okay, so what it did was it gave us our uh, polling location and our, the address of our polling location. 
Um, and then it also highlighted on the map, it throws a pin, the address that you put in or the spot that you selected, um, as well as then showing you and highlighting where your uh, polling location would be. Um, so again, we just have a few features that we've been able to add some additional functionality to. Um, we can go ahead and move on. Um, property parcel, we looked at that. Um, the, okay, yeah, we're good with residential. You can move on to general. Um, excellent. Um, so the general feature layer is what you can see seeing from the um, Sidwell hosted GIS map we've had in the past. This has got a lot of our line work in it. Um, parcel lines, road center lines, subdivisions, um, things along those lines, building footprints. Um, so then please uh, move along to the next feature. Um, transportation, let's take a look at that really quick. There's some kind of neat stuff in here too. Um, and uh, if you could go ahead and expand that transportation feature for me. Awesome. Um, so you'll see in here we have uh, our rail systems, uh, road center line again. Um, another one that's the uh, INDOT uh, road function class, um, which will allow you to uh, uh, highlight and color code uh, different function classes for um, any kind of uh, analysis that's being done with our roadways. Um, and then below function class, we have another feature um, that we find pretty useful that actually highlights uh, highlights our county maintained roads. So you can see if the uh, road where there may be a question or concern is is actually maintained and handled by Porter County, um, this will highlight that. Um, so uh, that is what we have out currently and as uh, we develop, uh, mine more data, create more feature layers, um, <coughs> that stuff is gonna be available here. Um, does anybody have questions? Any questions? Thanks, Chuck. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the More to come, right? Absolutely. A lot more to come. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bob, any other thing? You guys have anything else? That's all we have. All right. Thank you. Thank you. See you Thursday yes. at 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock. Haven Hollow. Open to the public. Yes. Are you going to wear your hat the whole time between now and then? <laughs> Are you going to wear your hat the whole time between now and then? I'll probably take it off when I go home. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, next up, we have a request to use the courthouse grounds on Friday, December 7th from 2 to 9 p.m. for holiday days, which will include a live nativity and holiday caroling. Um, has this been coordinated with all the construction that's going on over there? Yes, they understand that it could be limited, but we believe that the uh, fencing and the construction will be far enough progress to allow this to occur by then. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to second on a request to use the courthouse grounds on Friday, December 7th from 2 to 9 p.m. for holidays, which will include a live nativity and holiday caroling. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. And that comes to the end of our board. Anybody wishing to address this board? Please come forward. State your name, address, under a microphone, please. Keep come up here. Good morning. I'm uh, Dwayne Davison, uh, 701 Elmhurst Avenue, Valparaiso. Um, uh, I normally don't come to uh, county commissioner meetings, uh, in large part due to uh, its time. Uh, 10 a.m. is quite difficult, I feel like, for of the majority of the public, uh, um, but I understand you have to do it, you know, whenever, whenever you need to. Um, I'm uh, here because I, I probably would not have spoken had uh, an issue been on the agenda, and I just wanted kind of an update, uh, and that's regards to 15 North Franklin Street. Um, I've I come here as an independent. I'm not affiliated with any political party. Um, a taxpayer and uh, I've kind of just been watching from a distance uh, as, as this lease has played out and um, to be honest I'm, I'm disappointed and and I'm not mad I'm just disappointed it's it's not this board's specific um, problem that you created but you inherited it so I want to make that clear I, I do understand that 
Um, so in reality, it's how this board reacts to what you've inherited that's the most important thing. Uh, so that being said, I, I, uh, you know, I guess I, I'm, I'm disappointed because we had an opportunity once an uh, independent lease came, uh, or independent uh, decision came forward, um, you did the right thing, asking for outside opinion. And that outside opinion gave you options. The options were you could bail on the lease if, if it was indeed no good. Uh, you could have, from that position of power, you could have negotiated just, hey, we need one year. We're going to move into the new jail. And, uh, you know, I support the concept of the bond issue, buying the jail, consolidating departments. Because in part, it avoids situations like this with leases with, with other stakeholders. Um, so certainly was heading in the right direction, but I, I, I don't know how this works. I admit this, but it would seem like once you get that knowledge, the very first person or body that should get this information probably is the the body that pays the bills, so the county council. Uh, possibly in front of that, but certainly secondly, would be the taxpayers. So if the taxpayers heard the same time as everyone else, so be it. Um, I understand that you wanted to have options going into the next meeting that would say, hey, uh, the building owner won't let us do this, won't let us do that. I, I understand that. but. That doesn't preclude the public, the taxpayers, the you know the people who pay the salaries in the end, from knowing this very important information. Um, you know, first and foremost, um, I I really don't want to micromanage this issue. I would prefer not to be here at all, sincerely. Um, but I feel like we've got to set up checks and balances that preclude this from happening in the future. Um, you know, I. I don't care that, you know, we don't need to name names on any of this. Just, you know, handle it in a professional, but more importantly, public way. Let the chips fall where they may. I don't have any legal opinions on this, but, uh, you know, if we can get out of the lease, then, then let's go. And then also, you know, certainly we need to be checking on other leases, not only with this um, party or business, uh, you know, property owner, um, probably all of them. I mean, it doesn't need to be just with any, anybody in particular. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess uh, the final question I'll have is, who owns this building? Because, I, uh, I mean, nobody seems to know, but if we're paying the lease, someone's got to know. So who, who does own this building? So. I really appreciate the time to address you here. Thank you very much. Thank you. To answer your question on the ownership issue, the ownership is owned through 15 North Franklin LLC. And that LLC may be, and obviously is owned by other members, but from a uh, search of the Secretary of State website, that information isn't readily available. The owner is listed as 15 North Franklin LLC. I personally, you know, that come back up so we can catch you. So, no, I just want to make sure you're recorded. That's all. Sure. Um, personally, that's that's helpful insofar as that's, that's public information. But to better understand the dynamics of all of this, it, it, it would be better to know. Well, who, you know, it, if everything's forthright up and up, no one needs to ask. Well, who who is that? But if Situations come to light whereby, hey, hey you know, we've got some issues, some problems, then I would want understand. more specific information. My understanding is that the Alex family owns it. It's a husband and wife, and they're the owners of the actual property. I believe they're one of the tenants of the building. Okay. And I believe they have a home health care type of business. I'm not familiar with their business exactly, but they are the current owners, my understanding and therefore the owners of 15 North Franklin LLC. I see. Yeah, I don't know them, anything about them, um, but uh, they, they seem to have maybe inherited this 
situation as well, just as you guys have. So, okay. That's my understanding. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Looks like we have another one. Come on forward. My name is Christopher Papillo. Um, I have a question about the same subject, and it's for Commissioner Good. Um, Commissioner Good, it was reported in the paper that you had a private meeting with the previous, uh, who I believe the previous owner of 15 North Franklin, Chuck Williams. I'm curious why you chose to have that meeting, that private meeting, before sharing information with um, your uh, county council members and with the public, and more importantly, I'd like to know what the nature of that meeting was. It says in the paper that you discussed options. And so as a taxpayer, I'd like to know what those options are that you chose to discuss with Chuck Williams in private rather than in public, rather than asking him to come to a meeting, perhaps in the middle of the day, taking time out of his busy day as I and a number of others had, for some reason you saw fit to go to him. So the question specifically is what did you discuss with Mr. Williams and what were those options that were discussed or deliberated? Well, first, Mr. Mr. Williams' company is the property is the property manager. I asked the question of Mr. Good with all due respect. I'm just, I'm just I'm just clearing up the issue of why Mr. Williams would be involved in the first place. His his business is the property management company. The actual uh, employee of his that manages that particular property was not in the country, so Mr. Williams was the next one to go to. Um, so that is why the meeting with Mr. Williams instead of the actual property owner themselves happen because they have a property management company who's in charge of running their property for mm -hmm. them. Uh, just echo what, uh, what uh, Attorney McClure said. And, and Attorney McClure was present with me at right. the meeting as well, too. But I asked the question of you, what was, the, what was discussed in terms of options? It was. Uh, you were quoted in the paper saying you discussed options. I was not <laughs> quoted in the paper saying there were options, but uh, there was there was really no options to discuss. We were there to let the the uh, uh, the landlord know that uh, the the opinion came back void, and at that point there really is no negotiation. When you when you have a lease that is determined void. There's really nothing else that you can really talk about other than letting them know that it came back void. Uh, and they were, uh, that, that, that lease is signatory to the commissioner's office. The opinion was gotten and paid for by the commissioner's office budget. And we felt that it was necessary to let the landowner know <laughs> that the, uh, the opinion came back void. And that was really all that was discussed at that meeting. So the Times newspaper, when they said that the purpose of the meeting with Williams was to determine what options might be available to assure minimal impact on child support, so that was not discussed. That's that's no, incorrect. It was not the Times discussed. the Times incorrectly reported that. I, it, that was never discussed. None of the options were discussed. Okay. It was basically telling them that their their lease was void. That was all we discussed. And that couldn't have been done with a document. I mean, it's just interesting that. You chose to go to them before you went to, again, both to the public and the county council. Is that kind of normal legal protocol or um, I mean, to, to go to a private I mean, meeting? To, to, I mean, first of all, it, it was a private meeting, but... Well, it wasn't it, public. I, that's what I said. It was a private meeting. No laws were broken, Mr. I'm not suggesting the law was broken. Well, I'm, asking the, 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 like, I'm asking specifically why you chose to have a private meeting and not first make a county I just told you. To pass information on, why did it take a private meeting? How else would you pass it on? In, in uh, lawyers pass along legal documents all the time. So an email would have been better than a meeting? Yes, because it would have been public record, and that meeting was not public record. So the public, the taxpayers, have no idea what took place in that private meeting that you had. So there were no, I just want to be clear, there were no options discussed. There's no option to extend this lease for a year, but none of that was discussed no with Mr. Lewis. There's no lease to extend. It's void. It's void. The lease is void. Is that, is that clear? You can't it's clear. I'm just recounting what the Times reported. I'm not certain where they got. You're saying that's completely false and inaccurate, so part of what I'm doing is asking questions to clear this up for the taxpayers, since, again, we weren't in that private meeting, and there's no record 
of that private well, meeting. I think the record, Mr. Papillo, is yet to be determined. I think there's action that's going to be taken tonight or inaction. I'm really not sure. Uh, that, that is up to the county council tonight and their meeting tonight, and then we will follow accordingly. This is the they were the, they were the body of government that brought this up and is outraged and has all the concerns, and they're the ones, and we're letting them deal with it. And you're not outraged or concerned? Of course we are. I didn't I didn't sign this lease. You may want to ask them. I know that. I know that, but you're Mr. Bay was the one that signed the lease. You're telling me you so to be Why are you interrupting me now? I'm, you're asking me to talk. I'm talking, and now you want to interrupt me. I think you're just here to, to, to disturb is really all to you're here to do. As a taxpayer, I'm asking a question. I'm trying to get some answers. I've answered you. Mr. Papil, uh, if I got your name right, yeah. uh, okay. since uh, Commissioner Good wanted to bring me into this, the lease under question I did not sign, first of all, and that's an absolute fact. The lease I signed in 1999 as a commissioner was with a different owner, it was for a different square footage yes, amount today. And, a, and, and rental amount. So, no, I didn't. I didn't, and I didn't attend that meeting. I didn't. I don't think. I don't. I didn't. Was not asked. Uh, was not asked to attend the meeting. Was not made. Was not made aware of the meeting. And had I been aware of it, I would have tried to talk to those who were supporting it out of it. Thank you. I appreciate that information. Thank you all. Anybody else? Of course. Of course. Donna Purdue. I'm uh, 802 Washington Street here in Valparaiso, citizen, and I'm also a candidate for uh, Puerto County Commissioner. My only question is for the three of you, have you come to a decision based on the, the child support offices? Where are they going to go? I don't want to have to wait until tonight when Sylvia Graham and the rest of the commission or the council comes up with something and we don't have a home, since you made a point to say that it was all for the children, that meeting. The child support office contingent upon council action tonight would be moved to the uh, 157 Franklin into the restaurant space before the end of the year. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Hi, uh, my name is Drew Wanger. In, in all fairness, I live at 611 Center Street, but I'm also the chair of the Valparaiso Democrat Committee. Now, as Dwayne said, none of us really want to be here. You guys basically inherited this problem. We understand that. But number one, I think that we have to realize that when something like this pops up, on it, the Northwest Indiana Times and media, this number one dec derides the faith that our citizens have in these public institutions. So it is very prudent that we come to a decision and to clear up the air to make this as transparent as possible so that number two, people that view Porter County, I've lived in Porter County and Valparaiso my entire life. I love this area. But when other people see what's happening in Porter County, whether it's in Portage, or whether it's with this lease, people will question what the, the, the character of poor county people and our politicians are. So my question, I guess, is how exactly, I, I know this has caused some deep divisions within the commissioners and between the commissioners and the council. So how exactly, Duane had brought this up and I didn't really hear a, a clear answer. Number one, how exactly are you going to make sure that something like this does not occur again so that we don't have to, to fall over ourselves to come up with answers to the public. And number two, how are you going to, I guess, repair the, if they do exist, if I am correct, these divisions between you guys and the council? Because the number one thing that I think that uh, our county government should be doing is collaborating between the, the commissioners and the council. That's how we create an efficient and strong government. So, thank you. Well, if I, if I may real quick, uh, a situation which occurred uh, back in 2014, uh, today would have never allowed to happen. Uh, you know what, Jim, let me address this because I was there. And sure, go ahead. And things have changed a lot in how we do things. Um, we now have side <laughs> we have contract check sheets, everything is on the agenda or we don't deal with it. We make sure we have three signatures on every single contract. 
which would include leases. Um, we now have the meetings televised. There's there's so many more checks and balances here. Uh, that it, he's right. It would have never happened today. So uh, I hope that answers that question. And we're always actively trying to find more ways to be transparent. But it, it was not on the agenda today. But, I, I wouldn't have but we did not bring this forward. We're, we're not bringing okay. this forward. We're you responding are. to you. It was not our. Through the open part of the meeting, we're letting you bring this to us. It's not on our agenda. Like I said earlier, we're waiting for the council to take to take action tonight. Based off their action, then we have a whole host of things that we have to do after that. It's part of the checks and balances. It's funny how some people talk about checks and balances when they want and then they omit, eliminate checks and balances when it's convenient for their argument. But we're trying to follow the protocol here in doing this right. And, we, and there's a lot of other things that we really can't address and talk about right now because there's going to be further litigation here. So everything that we say going forward can be part of a record in a lawsuit. So we have to be very careful what we say because, you know, if certain actions are taken, I think that the county could be uh, responsible for some very big fines, very big settlement penalties, and very thing else. So a $30,000 a year lease situation for one year uh, could turn into a quarter of a million dollars and maybe more in the next year and a half. That's to be played out in advance. I'm not going to say anything here that's going to detriment the county's position in a lawsuit. And I think that's what everybody's sort of forgetting here. You don't debate these things certain things, and there are requirements for leases and real estate to where you can do them in private because you don't want to negotiate this in the public. You're basically negotiating against yourself. Unfortunately, there's some members of the county council that have decided to play it out in the public. And I think if this does go to a court case, I think it's going to be very detrimental for some of the things that have already been said. So, you know, this, this will be to be continued. It'll, it'll, it'll be the story that keeps on giving to the reporters and to some of those people who just don't like certain people or certain things. But we're trying to ride above all that here, and we're trying to do this in a way that's done in a responsible way. We're waiting for the council to take action tonight. We have a plan that we talked about that where we're going to put these people, depending on what position and what's decided tonight, we have a plan in place. We're sitting and we're waiting to implement that plan. We have everybody on board. We're ready to go. We found a place for these folks. And to answer the last question that this young man said, the reason that this won't happen again is the building that we bought as part of the capital improvement plan will take, we have four leases in county government. All right, this one, it goes away, right? So now we have two more. One is the health department portage that's one year. We're building them a new place to put into. And 4D is going into 157. So we're getting rid of that lease. So at the end of the day, the only lease that is left is a lease on the undercover drug unit where nobody really knows where that is. And I don't think we want to know where that is, OK? So I understand the angst. I understand the concern. This is something that we inherited. We're trying to work through it. We're trying to be responsible. And I'd like to add one more thing. The people that we went and spoke to, or their representative, they are taxpayers of Porter County, too. They're also taxpayers. So I think a vendor calling a, 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 another uh, a general person that's in charge of government calling a vendor, I really don't think, I think this thing has really been blown out of proportion. But I also know why. It's because of the individual that we met with. And to me, that's personal politics. We have a responsibility up here to discuss and talk to people and work through issues. And that's really all we're trying to do. And the reason that it's not on our agenda today is because it's going to be addressed tonight. And then we take action from there. And that's how it needs to go down. And then we have a host of other things that we need to do after that. We're going to need to hire a law firm. We're going to need to, there, There's a lot of things that need to happen yet. And it will all be done in this room, folks. It will all be done in this room. So stay tuned. You'll hear more, but it's coming. So thank you. <laughs> Jeff, you want, Scott, let's that decision hasn't been made, and it, basically the issue boils down to is that litigation, whether it's initiated by this board 
or initiated in defense of an action will need to be defended. And if that, and if that decision is made to use a law firm, then that will be done here at this meeting, but we're just wait, we're still waiting for tonight's action to happen so that we can uh, move forward with the direction that we're going to go in and, and go from there. your opinion, but uh, I think if you would have come to any commissioners meetings over the last two and a half years, you would see that uh, this board has done a yeoman's work in trying to fix a lot of the things that were left here uh, by previous administrations and other things. So it is uh, a lot of times when you're working through other people's messes and you're working through other problems and you're trying to problem solve, it is very, uh, gets you full of angst and it is very uh, troubling sometimes, and it is very contentious sometimes because you're you're basically cleaning up and fixing things that were left for, for, from multiple leaders, multiple people in the past that have just sort of let it this let this thing uh, go on and on and on. So yes, sir, it is frustrating for us, and it, and it does give us some angst. But at the end of the day, what I'm trying to say is we're trying to fix a problem that was not created by this board, and uh, the nuances and how we went about it. I, I apologize. It wasn't done. Uh, it, it really wasn't done in malice. It wasn't done in any way to, uh, you know, show favor or anything. To be, we got an opinion back that we were quite frankly shocked about, and we thought that we needed to let the owner of that property, a vendor that we've had a relationship with for a long time, we needed to let them know immediately that this is what was going on. And that's what the meeting was for. That it was just that plain and simple. And uh, I, I, I respect your opinion, but uh, I also feel that um, for you just showing up at your first meeting and sort of casting these kind of aspersions on what we're doing over here, I, I felt like I need to defend myself because we've done a yeoman's job up here of trying to fix a lot of things that have been broke up here. And and that is why we're. Uh, re-upping and running again is because there's a lot more of this that we need to clean up and that's what we're that's what we're trying to do so uh, I appreciate your comments but uh, um, I, I have a I have a different opinion but that's fine that's what the uh, government's all about so any other questions oh Jeff Larson feel free for guy you were standing over there yeah, it's, okay. it's easy to overlook me <laughs> hey uh, this is, I'm Jeff Larson the county councilman I just wanted to address some of the issues that were brought up here, and, and um, there's a lot of emotion in the room, and it's kind of uh, fueled by what's being printed in the paper, but the reality of the council is, is that this is the governing body, and we work within parameters financially, but it's not our objective to govern the commissioners. Their objective is to write ordinance and pass things on to us for approval, and what happened with this contract is, is that they sent down a path earlier on in their elected terms that they were going to reorganize everything contractually that we looked at. So every item has been searched through in the county. And because of their hard work, this was discovered. So the reality of this is, is we're fixing problems as they come up. There's not animosity between the council and the commissioners. We're still willing to work together. We're trying to find the best solution. But what happens in a situation like this is, you have an outside entity that owns a property. 
anything you say or do against that outside entity opens you up for some type of legal repercussion, some type of problem that could come up. So you have to be very, kind of with these necessary kit gloves, you have to really be soft in how you handle these things. And what Jeff did was legally within his boundaries to go meet with the landlord because they signed all the contractual agreements with these entities. And so as a representative of the commissioners, he was not outside his boundaries to go and talk to that individual. And I would expect that if you understood the lease, had it been null and void, they could have kicked 4D out that day. So there's probably some situations that we haven't looked at in the overall picture. But he still housed them in that building. We are making uh, recommendations as to where they go. You obviously have heard that today. And, to, and this evening, we'll decide on whether we're going to continue to fund that or not. But from our perspective, we don't see that as a different direction. We're still trying to work together. So for some of those questions that you guys have that you, you see on the news or there's been other issues, we're not going in different directions here. We're still trying to figure out how to fix this and then move on to the next problem because we're going to find more. And the biggest issue is, is the less we talk about this, the less legally responsible we're going to be. The more this is discussed, the more possibilities of things being used against us in the public eye and also in the private sector. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. Anybody else? One last chance. With that, this board stands in recess.